So my friends, I don't know if you remember, but we did a $300 used gaming PC to find out what was the best gaming PC we could build here in South Africa versus what Zach's Tech Turf could do over in the United States. If you haven't watched his video, you should check it out right up there, and you should definitely subscribe to Zach since he's amazing. Anyways, the GPU that I was actually able to pick up for that video was this Galax 970 Hall of Fame. I picked it up for about 1,600 Rand, which comes out to about $115 or so, depending on the exchange rate, which is a pretty good deal. But then that got me wondering, is a 970 still relevant here in 2019 with the latest games that are coming out? So we put the 970 on our test bench right over here, and we tried to see what is good with this system? Is it performing well? And what do we get? But before we get into all of that, let me tell you about today's video sponsor. GGWP and their gaming gear wooden platform. This desk, my friends, syncs RGB lighting with your computer. You can see it fits everything. It has fantastic cable management routing. It has an acrylic piece that goes through both of the tabletops right here and distributes all of the light right here on me and then also underneath, making a gorgeous underglow and back glow and side glow. It just glows your entire room up, my friend. You're going to want to check this thing out. They have two different models, the eSports Pro as well as the Alpha Desk, and you can pick them up at the link in the video description. Currently only available in South Africa, but they're looking to open up international shipping sometime soon. We love this desk. It is the uh, just basically where we do all of our benchmarking and testing from here on forth. So big thanks to GGWP for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, we currently have our 200,000 subscriber giveaway going on where you can win an RTX 2080 Ti and a one terabyte NVMe drive courtesy of Wootware because we're celebrating because y'all are so gosh dang awesome subbing to us and Wootware is so gosh dang awesome for uh, sponsoring this stuff to give away. Anyways, let's move on to the video. So the 970 actually performs pretty well in the latest games as long as you you know keep the settings appropriate. But we actually ran into an issue with this specific 970 and you can see it right here if you would so come in. You can see that the temperature on this 970 right now is running at 91 degrees Celsius, which is way too freaking hot. But then I was like, wait, the, the, the heat sinks and the heat pipes, none of this is hot. The back plate's a little warm, but this is all just relatively cool. And I'm pretty sure that the thermal paste on this thing was never changed out. It's probably still rocking stock thermal paste. And that gave me the idea, or at least the point of today's video, we're actually going to put new thermal paste on this thing, change out whatever we can on the cooler to hopefully make sure that it, uh, it cools a little bit more effectively and see, can we get a performance uplift on the 970 by fixing at least the thermal conductivity on the GPU? And then we can look at the before and after benchmarks. So let's stop torturing it at 91 degrees C because that eventually will kill this thing. That's way too freaking hot because if the core is at 91C, I don't want to imagine what everything else is running at. So let's take this puppy out. Unplug and let me grab my iFixit ProTech Toolkit and we should be able to do this. You guys, if you want a ProTech Toolkit, we have a link in the video description in case you care. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove the heat sink and then try to change out the thermal paste and make this thing run a little bit better. The only question I have is that there's a screw here, here, here. I don't think those would be for the front. I think those are probably just for the back plate. I'm gonna take them out just in case. They actually look like they go straight through the back plate. Oh yeah, iFix it makes this so easy. All right, there, that's taken off. We gotta separate the fan connectors as well as the LED connectors, and we should be good to, oh yeah, there it is. You can actually, you can, oh, look at all of that dust on the, the uh, VR, VRAM cooling. And then you can actually see the lettering on this GPU core. There is no thermal paste left right there. No wonder it wasn't actually uh, transferring any heat to the heat sink and that it was cooled to the touch. So let's get some isopropyl alcohol. We're gonna replace it with this uh, Fantex PH NDC thermal compound. It should uh, be better <laughs> that's what, than what's on there right now. Uh, we're not gonna do anything fancy. I'm not gonna get any thermal grizzly or anything like that, but Let's fix this. And then I'm also gonna clean up these uh, VRAM heat sinks cause that's kind of disgusting. But uh, you know, when a card is over four years old, that's to be expected. Where's my cleaning supplies? That is a gorgeous white PCB. Love it. Then that actually looks pretty cool from the backside. Cool. Now let's clean it off. Let's get this party going. Let's get this. That's a bad song, right? That a song? Okay, everybody's listening to headphones. Cool. Good talk. My usual crowd's dead today. Oh man, that is, 
That is thick. That's a thick bar right there. That, oh, that, it's just like, it's caked on there so bad on the sides. That is, haha, <laughs> see, it's a Maxwell chip right there. So during benchmarking, the average temperature that this card was running was about 90 degrees Celsius, which is way too freaking high. In a few games, it peaked at like 92, 93 degrees. And then for the most part, every single game was able to get it over 85 with very little effort being put in, which tells me that this thing is dying from heat exhaustion. Now it's time for more thermal paste. So let's go ahead, put a little dab on there. And with GPUs, it doesn't really matter as much because it's gonna squish out anyways, but that should be enough. I'll just flip this over instead of trying to align it this way. Uh, I'm not gonna attach the fans back just yet. I'm just gonna tighten this thing down so that we can uh, get some dispersion and see if that actually gives us an even spread of thermal paste and that this thing will be good to go again. That might be too much thermal paste. It'll be okay. It'll be better than no thermal paste, I'll tell you that. I honestly wonder what made Galax think that putting like 20 screw holes to keep the back plate secured was a great idea. Gosh dang it. I blame you, Tank. Because it's people like you that they have to stop from doing this. I don't know you. That's my purse. It's just shaking on any excess paper towel. No, that's not how, that's not. There we go. This took a lot longer than I thought it was going to. Finally, done. Get out of my way. Let's get this graphic card back in. There it is. Let's plug into power and HDMI. And we'll just do a, a little stress test in TimeSpy again to see whether or not um, we actually were able to drop the temperatures effectively. And then if we were, we'll go ahead and do redo all of the benchmarking that I've already done and see if we can get an increased score just by virtue of it not trying to murder itself. Hopefully we get some better thermal transfer to the heat sink and it's not just gonna burn itself to death. And run. Just need to make sure that we'll have the display going. Looks like all of that should be fine. Come on, Hall of Fame. Do less than 90 degrees, please. There we go. That is already tremendously better. Holy crap. So even on startup, when I first did this, this thing was running at 80 degrees C from the get go. And it was boosting down to like 12, I think it was like 1268 was the clock speed. We are 200 megahertz faster now because I actually changed out the thermal pace, which means we're seeing actually a 15% increase in clock speed just by the virtue of me actually replacing all of that thermal goop. So I'm gonna do all of the benchmarking again. We'll see what type of performance we can get out of it. And uh, to kind of ice the cake a little bit better, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set a custom fan curve instead of the predefined one, actually making sure that the fan ramps up a bit faster at certain speeds. So at 50 degrees is when it's gonna turn on. And then from there, we should probably having it hit a hundred percent fan speed at 80 degrees. At 70 degrees, it'll be at 80% fan speed. At 50 degrees, it'll be at 50% fan speed. Actually, that's a little high. Let's do it. There we go. That should, that that's a really intense curve, but that'll make sure that we actually maintain clock speed. So I'm gonna benchmark this card again. Now that it's actually running cool and it's not dying, we'll see how much better is the 970 now than it was just a few minutes ago. So, it was a success. It's been a few days, obviously, you guys can probably tell by the fact that my hair has regrown. And uh, yeah, not wearing the same clothes. Either way, the 970 after benchmarking with the new thermal paste changed everything. So we went from that 1,228 megahertz to 1,468. And that gave us a huge performance up list. So we did all of our benchmarking in 1080p with high settings on the 970. And you can see for a lot of the games, we gained on average about 10% extra performance by just replacing the thermal paste on this age old card. So Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we gained only about 4% there. Far Cry 5 was 10%. Ghost Recon Wildlands was 12%. Strange Brigade was another 12%. Hitman 2 was another 12%. Final Fantasy 15 was another 12%, only 49 FPS though. But then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, over 60 FPS with a 13% gain. Shadow of War, 65 FPS with a 6.5% gain. That's more of a CPU bound scenario. And then all of the other games that we did, Metro Last Light, Witcher 3, Resident Evil 2, Battlefield 5, Apex Legends, all of them seeing significant significant performance increases with the different thermal paste, especially since we got about a 20% clock speed improvement, which netted us mostly about a 10% performance increase, which meant that at 1080p in high settings with games that released either in like 2017 to 2019, the 970 actually still really holds its own. Obviously there are some instances where that four gigabytes 
three and a half gigabytes of VRAM might not necessarily keep up, but then dropping the settings just a scooch to hopefully diminish the VRAM requirements, such as in Resident Evil 2. A lot of people talk about that one being something that takes a lot of VRAM, but at just normal high settings, it's only using about three gigabytes. It's not using that extra 500 megabytes that's super slow. So the 970 in 2019, honestly, is something that I could highly recommend. You can probably find a lot of them for about 100 or 120 dollars somewhere in that range maybe even cheaper than that if you find a pretty good deal considering the fact that i picked this one up for about 115 dollars here in south africa you guys should be able to get a better deal as well and obviously it's the hall of fame so it's a really good card but at the same time you can overclock overclock most cards to at least get up to snuff in terms of performance with the hall of fame so conclusion to the video 970 still a worthwhile card these days should definitely pick one up if you're looking at getting one and you just want to play normal games at 1080p with high settings it's gonna work everything just works my friends so that's the conclusion for this video don't forget to enter our giveaway because we're giving away a rtx 2080 ti and a one terabyte nvme drive courtesy of wootware for our 200,000 subscriber uh celebration basically and don't forget that this video is brought to you by ggwp and their amazing desk thank you guys so much for sponsoring this video obviously all of the 970 testing took place on here and it's a few days later but uh whew. Look at this pretty system on this GGWP desk. It all just works. It all just works. And also don't forget to enter our 200,000 subscriber giveaway at the link in the description. You guys know you want to win a 2080 Ti just as much as you want the GGWP desk. JJ. All right, back to uh, past me. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Let me doubt, know down in the comments uh, what cards you want us to check out in the future. Do you want us to check out 960s or other cards from decades ago? Anyways, anything, just things, cards, graphics, <laughs> and stuff, and comments, let me know. Bye. <laughs>